style. Hands down by far the 80s girl because I am an 80s child. That's a good one. That's a good question. I think that I would have to go with Cinderella. All a cow usually does is eat and sleep. Who wouldn't want that life, right? Wow. <laughs> to tell you the truth, you guys, almost every pair of shoes is swoon worthy. Let's just be honest, ladies. I already know you're all going to cringe at the answer to this one. So we are back for part two and there are some very interesting questions in this one. These questions were sent in to me via email through an audio recording so I don't actually have screenshots to throw up for you in this one. I'm going to listen to the question, try my best to remember to repeat it back to you correctly and then answer it the best way that I can. So here we go. Alright, this one is a very interesting question you guys. It said, would you to return back to being a five year old? if you could retain all of the knowledge that you have right now, or would you rather stay at the age you're at right now and possess all the knowledge you will ever gain until the day you die? That is a very interesting question and a tough one, actually, because your, your natural thought process is, if I went back in time having all the knowledge that I have right now, I could definitely make some different decisions and choices and maybe correct some mistakes that I've made along the way. But then whenever I think about it in that way, I think if I corrected all the mistakes that I had made along the way, then I might not know what I know now because part of the knowledge that I have is through the mistakes that I made. So I think I'm going to have to go with the fact that if I could stay right now at my current age and have all of the knowledge that I will ever gain, all of the wisdom that I will ever have, then yeah, I think I would probably stay where I am right now so that I can make some better and wiser decisions between now and the day that I die. Question number two, and I already know you're all going to cringe at the answer to this one, but it was, what decade, as far as their fashion is concerned, do you think we should go back to? It should be back in style. Hands down by far the 80s girl because I am an 80s child. I loved everything about it. The wild hair, the dark, bold makeup, the big shoulder pads, that whole style, the music, the everything. I just love the 80s and if I could bring it back and revive it, I most certainly would. The next question was what secular book, not having to do with anything ecclesiastical or theological, what I have to say would be my favorite piece of work. To be quite honest with you, I have not read a secular book in so long. Everything that I read has to do with personal growth and development or studying deeper about theological issues. That's what I spend my time reading and studying. From what I can remember, whenever I was younger, I used to love John Steinbeck. I loved the way he wrote and read a lot of his stuff whenever I was young. Now that I've gotten older though and realized kind of how socialistic and communistic some of his views leaned, I'm not so sure that I would even indulge in that anymore. But whenever I was younger, he was definitely by far one of my favorite authors. The next question is which secular fictional character do you admire the most? That's a good one. That's a good question. I think that I would have to go with Cinderella and not from the magical Disney perspective because I'm not into all the magic of Disney and all of that that goes with with that. But there was a movie several years back called Ever After. Some of you probably have seen it. It had Drew Barrymore in it. And I love the way that that story portrayed the character of Cinderella. And matter of fact, I have a conference seminar topic that I teach called Conquering the Cinderella Complex and Releasing Your Inner Princess. And I just, I love that story about no matter what your life circumstances may be on the outside, no matter what it may look like to other people and even how you may perceive things momentarily, there is a divine calling and an inner princess lying inside of you that is screaming to get out if you will embrace her and 
release her. So I definitely would have to go with the Cinder Girl. The next part of that question was, which fictional character do I like the least? Again, it's hard to narrow that down to just one, but I think that I would have to go with all of the stories, the fictional stories that have witches in them and the witch characters, just like on The Wizard of Oz, you had the Wicked Witch of the North and the Wicked Witch of the East. And, and in Snow White, you have a witch in that story. There are so many, especially some of our favorite childhood stories that had witches in them. Those are my least favorite characters. And if I could do away with all of the work that contained that, I would. This next question is which secular document, essay, or book, I think it was, do you feel has most helped the United States of America? By far, the Constitution. I firmly believe in, uphold, and stand behind the Constitution of the United States. And I could get really riled up on this subject, you guys, because it seems as though right now there is a huge attack against our Constitution and a big push to abolish the Constitution, to rewrite it, and to do away with everything that has made this nation great. So by far, I am going with the Constitution. All right, the next part of that question was, which secular book, essay, or document do I feel has done the most damage to the United States? Actually, I think this piece of work has done the most damage to everyone, everywhere, worldwide, not just the United States, but it would have to by far be the works of Charles Darwin. I cannot even put into words my contempt for the philosophy that he had and for the works that he laid out there that people have bought into hook, line, and sinker, although there has never been any scientific evidence at all to back up what he proclaimed to be as truth. And I think that it has done a lot of damage, absolutely by far. Second to that, I think would have to be the, um, I can't remember the actual name of the reports The I want to say the Ken, Kensington reports, Kinsey reports, whatever those reports were that came out years ago that documented and followed through with pedophilia and trying to make it a normalization in society. And that is an interesting piece of work that came out. It was very popular at its time and it has done a lot of damage. So those are the two things that I think probably by far I would have to say have impacted culture the most probably and done the most damage. The next question was, if I could be an animal for one day, what animal would it be? <laughs> I probably would, it would be a toss up, I think, between an eagle, an eagle and a cow because <laughs> all a cow usually does is eat and sleep. Who wouldn't want that life, right? But eagles are so majestic and they fly high above the earth where they can see so much and evaluate what's happening down below. So, woo, that one would be a toss up. An eagle or a cow. The next question is, can I sew? If so, what can I sew? And if not, why can't I sew? Yes, I can, actually. Whenever I was about nine years old, I was a member of a group called 4-H, and I learned how to use a sewing machine, and I learned how to sew. I don't... I, I would have to have a little bit of refresher because I have not used a sewing machine in so long, but yes, I can. I can sew very well by hand. And as a matter of fact, I have made my daughter a whole entire angel costume completely by hand without aid of a sewing machine. I've sewed a lot of stuff by hand. So yes, I can sew. The next question was, if I were a seamstress, what style of clothes would I most enjoy creating? Ball gowns by far, you guys. I love beautiful evening gowns that are glittery and shimmery and just when you walk into a room, they command attention 
Yeah, if I was a seamstress or a designer, that's exactly what I would spend my time working on. The next question was, what is the best deal I've ever gotten? And she said, I could interpret that any way I want to as far as the word deal. I think the best deal that I have ever gotten was whenever I gave my life to Christ and he gave me all of his riches, wisdom, peace, and love in return. There is absolutely no other deal in this life that I can think even comes close to comparing to that deal. The next question was, since I love shoes, which style do I love the best? That's a hard question because I like all kinds of shoes, all kinds of styles, and I really think that the occasion dictates the style, if that makes sense. So I like them all pretty equally, but I guess if I had to pick just one, if I could only ever wear just one kind of shoe for the rest of my life and I had to get rid of everything else and never purchase another shoe except for one style, I would have to go with the flip-flop because flip-flops are comfortable, they're cool, they're definitely a Florida staple. You can jazz them up, dress them up, dress them down. You can go from very casual, just out in your yard working in the garden type of flip-flop to a very fancy, elegant, classy type of flip-flop. So I'd have to go with that. The next part of that question was, which style of shoe do I like the least? I don't know that I could say which one I like the least because I pretty much like them all the same. The next question also has to do with shoes and it said, what pair of shoes have you ever seen that is 100% swoon worthy? Wow, <laughs> to tell you the truth, you guys, almost every pair of shoes is swoon worthy. Let's just be honest, ladies. I don't know. I definitely know ones with jewels on them. I have a couple of pair actually that are acrylic shoes. I call them my Cinderella shoes. They're acrylic shoes and they have some jewels on them and those I absolutely love. I love them. I love the other pair of Cinderella shoes I've shown you guys recently. My silver shoes that my daughter bought me a couple of years ago. Absolutely love those. I've seen shoes on TV, movie stars, and all kinds of fancy shoes inside of some very uh, top dollar stores, and I just love them all. All right, the next question was, which secular band or musician do I enjoy the most? And I have to be honest with you guys, I do not indulge in secular music at all. I just, I firmly believe that our life should be guided by Philippians 4, 8, and that everything we feed on affects who we are spiritually, emotionally, and, and mentally. And although there may be some secular songs out there that aren't necessarily bad as far as, you know, raunchy lyrics and that kind of stuff, I just, I choose to indulge in music that uplifts and benefits my spirit and draws me into worship of God. And I cannot do that with secular music. So I don't have a secular musician that I enjoy. The next question was, what is my official title? Reverend, pastor, bishop, teacher, preacher, high priestess, and I think that was all of the choices that were listed there. My actual formal title is Reverend. I am Reverend Dina Rose. The kids at church call me Pastor Dina because I am the youth pastor. Uh, people inside of the church will typically call me Pastor Dina. It's very rare that they just call you Reverend. But when documents come to my home, the official title and the official address is Reverend. <laughs>